I was late, stone, and hungover everywhere I went. I had taken money from a till to get opiates one day because I didn't have cash on me. Puking in a porta potty. Nobody wants to do that. Oh That's my gosh. a low point. And it was like this, I can't do this anymore. We had a pretty tragic incident happen. We couldn't find him. We didn't know where he was. By the grace of God, pulled me in a room and said, I'm gonna give you 30 days. I was using so many opiates that I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would snort op opiates just to get back to bed. So you said you are 16 months over? Yes. Yes. Alcohol free. Alcohol free. Yes. Not a drop. No. Um, That's awesome. And what was your reasoning? Um, my relationship with alcohol has always changed in different forms. <laughs> I think in the beginning it was fun. I mean, I was a teenager. It was what everybody was doing. And you could wake up the next day and just roll to school. Right. It didn't matter. Like, there was no punishment to your body. And then as I got older, um, it turned into kind of like a crutch for a while mm -hmm. with some trauma that everybody goes through. And it wasn't fun anymore. It was more of like... The escape, yep. the running away, and my combination. I don't know if you talk about weed ever. Those are that was always chips and salsa. Was yep. drinking and smoking <laughs> together. So um, I think for a lot of my twenties, the theme was I was late, stone, and hungover everywhere I went, no matter what time of day. Um, and when I got pregnant with my now eight-year-old, I didn't drink the whole time. And I really, um, I really embraced sobriety then. I really liked it. And when I was done breastfeeding, started drinking again because I could. I mean, my time was up. I did my, my time. <laughs> you did your sober sentence. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and so when I started drinking again, it was the fun again. And I was a mom, so it wasn't often. It was when I could, when he was with my parents. And it was fun again, but the hangovers were not no. They were not fun at all. And it wasn't, it didn't have a place really for me at this point, um, 16 months ago, being a mom and having a career and having a hangover, those things really just didn't work together anymore. So the best way that I can describe is I just like outgrew it. It didn't have a place for me anymore. And I also was on a health journey. I wanted to yeah. lose weight. That's where I met you actually yeah. was at the gym. <laughs> Yeah, and um, that was too hard to do with the hangover because then you want to eat McDonald's when you're hungover. You can't and like you can't outrun, you can't outwork out alcohol in a no. bad diet. <laughs> no, it's no hard. matter what I was doing. So I really had to go on this health journey and do my exercises and quit drinking, and pretty soon it was really easy. It was more of just, I felt so much better, like my body and not being hungover. And mm -hmm. the last time I drank, my son really looks forward to this thing called Bug Day every year. I don't know if you guys have ever gone to the Botanical Gardens. No. It's yeah. where they can, like, explore bugs. Oh. Well, I had a really bad hangover oh, that day when we woke up. And it wasn't like I can be like, hey, this once a year thing that you really want to do, I can't because I'm sick. So he had to drive me down there. And it's like 100 degrees. Oh, the worst. And yeah. I was puking in a porta potty. Like nobody wants to do that. Oh That's my gosh. a low point. And it was like this, I can't do this anymore. I just can't. So I started working out started eating better, quit drinking, and he didn't. This was kind of, it was kind of hard on my own, mm -hmm. but it was something that I had to do for me and nobody else anyways. So that's when I started my journey. And you have been sober for how long? Uh, for about 116 days now. Nice, nice. And you have a little bit more of a detailed story. I do. Uh, yes, uh, it was 2017, and um, we had a pretty tragic incident happen where there were mornings when uh, our son Hank would stay with me, 
And then there's mornings that Carrie would take Hank to a daycare. Mm -hmm. And I woke up one morning and I called Carrie and she said, how's Hank doing? And I said, "Uh, what do you mean you took him to daycare? And she goes, no, he's at home. And so. And he had left the house by that point. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And so I went back home, um, panicked, super frantic. Um, we couldn't find him. We didn't know where he was. He was very young. Two? He was two. Mm-hmm. Two years old. I called the police instantly. Yeah. Um, when we finally were, did find him, he was down the block at a neighbor's house. Cops were there. Mm-hmm. And... Um, they ran my information, and nothing had came up that day. I had taken money from a till uh, from when I was working at the airport to get opiates one day because I didn't have cash on me, and I lost my job over that. Oh. I had uh, done jumped through all the hoops. I did community service. I was on the side of the road feeling very humble, if you will, um, at that time. And um, I did everything but paid like a hundred and thirty two dollar fine mm-hmm. and not knowing that I had put a warrant out for an arrest for me. Oh gosh. So the next morning, um, I go to work and I would <clears throat> I'd always show up to work a little bit early. Our executives and all of our top guys would show up around eight o'clock and I was there around 7:15 in the morning. And I grabbed two coworkers. I said, hey, guys, let me buy you guys some breakfast. Let's go down. We always had a food truck that showed up out front, and we go down. And um, uh, So when we go down there, the cop from the day before with Hank shows up and goes, are you Chad Anderson? And I said, yeah. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> nervous. Terrified. <laughs> Absolutely. No. And he goes, well, we have a warrant out for your arrest. And I said, are you? I've dealt with this my whole life. And I said, are you sure you got the right, Chad Anderson? There's a lot in the valley. And there really is. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> like I graduated school, with three like Chad three. Andersons yeah. oh. just in my class. and Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, even at that time, I had a tutor in my pocket that I snorted pills with. Um, I was handcuffed. And this is probably around 7.50 in the morning. As, at your job? At my job. They right, made it very public. Right Ugh. out front. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and just as I'm getting handcuffed, all the executives drove by and all my coworkers drove by. And, um, I was booked and released. I didn't have to stay the night, so I was booked and released. And I remember um, I went back to work the next day. There's a gentleman who, uh, great by the grace of God, pulled me in a room and said, I'm going to give you 30 days. You're not losing your job. I'm giving you... He, Kind of alluded that he knew what was going on, but he said, I think something's going on. You have 30 days to figure it out and come back. And mind you, this was six years ago. And I'm, uh, so I go back, or I'm sorry, I go to rehab. Uh, The day before that had happened, I was using so many opiates that I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would snort opiates just to get back to bed, like not to feel a high just to kind of get myself back to level so I could actually sleep. And uh, I was getting ready to go to work and I was just bawling in my car, just like, why can't I stop doing this? Why is it every thought? Why is it every event that I want to go to? I want to do this. And so I call this number. I just like look up, you know, suicide and uh, addiction centers. And um, I call this guy and I don't know, like trying to get into rehab as a, Feet in it was a sense. joke. Yeah. I've heard it's kind of hard. It's it's tough. And it's all like, hey, do you have the insurance? And it's all about mm-hmm. the money. It's not about the help. Um, and it's, you know, super difficult. So I call this number and this guy's like, nah, your insurance doesn't come to us. You know, and he goes, uh, but I'll talk to you. And he goes, I'll talk to you for as long as you need right now. And I remember that moment having a sense of like, there's hope. There's some help out there that will help me. And um, 
then the next day, you know, I, I'm in such a spiritual mode right now and things absolutely happen for the reasons that they do. And so to want that, ask for that, have the thing that happened with Hank to end me in a rehab three days later, um, I, I give all that to a higher power. Mm -hmm. And I really do. I will say the reason that happened, like that Hank attempted to find him, he was so messed up that he couldn't wake up. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank well. you. You're yes, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that in there. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's 100%. It's a, so it was every just walked thought. out the front door. Yeah. He couldn't. Which, I mean, to be fair, I mean, I think it's all happened to all of us. I mean. He's trying to find mom. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, you know I'm going to say, do. like, the CBH yeah. person brought Colton home once because he just slid out the front door. Yeah. So it happens. It happens. It yeah. happens. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. I was and, and I'm so much better with <laughs> yeah. it mentally than I've ever have been. Just that, yeah. Absolutely. It's terrifying. It really oh, does. God. You see, like, people it's get horrible. reamed for it when yeah. it happens. And it's like, that happened yeah. to us. Yeah. I had a friend. They had kids. I mean, even, like, like lots of our friends, boys especially, they're mm -hmm. very good escape artists. So, <gasps> I mean, yeah. It was scary. Of course, you're going to blame yourself for those situations. But, I mean, it happens. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, anyway, I end up in uh, Intermountain uh, for 30 days. And... What a what a, another humbling experience! Uh, you can't have shoelaces. It's almost like a psych ward. Oh, um, you're in like a dorm style military. Um, so the first night I go in there, there's a dude who's just ripping ass the whole night, and I can't <laughs> breathe. And uh, I to the point that I have to go to the nurse, and I'm like, I'm like, can I, can I get a different room or a different roommate? You know and she goes, yeah, no problem. And so we moved to a different room. That morning, I woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning to a guy poking me on the side. And I uh, come to find out the next morning he was a blind guy who was poking me with the stick because he didn't know if somebody was in the bed. Oh and I'm like, where in the fuck am I right You're now? Right. Like, what is going on? Um, so, um, you know, you go in kind of like, I, I went in just super sad. I, I mean, I was sitting there scared shitless. I remember Carrie driving me there, and I'm saying, turn around. There's no way I can do this. Never mind. Yes, I can, you know. And it was just such a tug of war in my mind of what was going on. Um, I go, and I complete a 28 day, 30 day, 28 days. Yeah. And that the first, yeah. 28 days? 28 days. And I remember um, leaving there on, you know, this giant pink cloud they all talk about. Yes. Oh. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. Every, everything's wonderful. Everything's yep. great. Um, gosh, this is easy, you know. Oh, man. All I had to do was get sober for 28 days and I'd be good. Um, I think it was 90 days um, with no weed, with nothing. But at that time, my priorities were out of whack. So it was always sobriety first, of course, but it was all me and it was all selfish. It was uh, sobriety at the time I played tennis. So then it was how many tennis matches can I play? And then from that to um, just, just a lot about me and my family and things kind of took the last straw. And it was, it was just really selfish. I mean, that's all it was. It was all about, hey, you know, I remember arguing with Carrie, like, she's like, you need to go to another meeting right now, you know, and I would say, well, I need to if I don't, you know, if I don't do that, but I go to a meeting, and then I would go to play two hours of tennis, I'd get home after dinners, and after Hank's in bed, and, mm. you know, and the, the suffering really came from my family, or to my family. So um, after 90 days, I went to 90 and 90, you know, did 90 meetings in 90 days, and I was super uh, motivated. And I remember just going to this meeting, and there's these older gentlemen there who, like, got 30 to 40 years of sobriety. And it just became this, like, pity party bitching fest during <laughs> this one meeting. And I remember being like, you know, this... I love thinking about this because it's the different take that I have on it now. But at that time, I'm like, fuck, I don't want to end up like these guys. Yeah. I don't want to be this guy that's coming and thumping sobriety on people 
30 days. I remember one guy's like, I'm 11,941 days sober. Oh my and gosh. I'm like, Jesus, you're keeping that much track. <laughs> <For> two hours. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, Jeez, I, no. And, and I remember just, you know, having this feeling. And I came to Carrie and I go, I don't think I'm getting anything out of these meetings. I said, I just don't think I'm getting anything out of them. I feel great. I'm staying sober, you know. And it's the I got this mentality that came about. And um, soon, you know, it, it, I mean, it's just like every other story I hear in, our, in my meetings where soon it's like, oh, man, you can smoke some weed. Just smoke mm. a little bit of weed. Well, vape pens had just come out, and I sure was easy. hooked yeah. on them. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I wasn't sober. So that was kind of hard, too. Trying to, well, it was like, try this new thing. You know, and <laughs> at that great. time, I had this take of, like, this is so temporary. You know, mm -hmm. like this is like I can't wait to where I can get to where I can just drink and smoke weed. And as long as I don't do opiates, I'll be fine, <laughs> you know, and um, it, it, it just. So, yeah. Sorry. No, no. Problem. So you started a sobriety journey before her, but then you but then fast forward, then you did a sobriety journey before him. Yeah. And then now you guys are like to together on the yeah. journey. Yes. <laughs> oh, I guess we've had different. Spouts of ours. We've been like doing yeah. this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Now and we're it, finally like. It doesn't like, work hey. with the other person not. It really doesn't. It doesn't. No. Um, yeah. It, so, so then you got into that mind frame of it was just temporary. Yes. Yeah. Um, so then uh, next thing I know, I remember um, going down the street and I've got a pretty high stress job. And it takes a lot of um, not just like mental fortitude of like the work that we do, but also like leading people and being having a team. Mm -hmm. And um, I work with a lot of intelligent people. And I remember just having a very high stress day. And that's pretty much all it took for me to go. Let me find a contact. The, and, and it was like I had blocked everybody I, in my mind. I didn't know. And then the moment I opened up the idea of like, hey, you can do this. You know, let's go try to find something to get out of this pain. It was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom, boom. And like two options came up. Within an hour, I'm driving over there. And, you know, I'm taking seven Vicodin. Oh. You know? and, and, I, and I'm going to the balls to the wall. Like just going as hard as I can to like. How do I get out of that? Um, knowing, you know, they call it having a recovery mind, uh, but, a, you know, still using um, was so, such a mind fuck. Like, it was just so, like, back and forth. Like, I'd be high, but I wouldn't want to be high, you know. And I would, um, you know, that escalated into a kratom spell. I don't know if you know what kratom is, but it's something that if you take a high dose of it, it opens the same receptors in your brain like what opiates would do, um, but not to the same levels. It's over the counter. And it's you can really? go to a smoke shop and get it. Not to encourage that, but like no. it's easy. Oh, it's scary how easy mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, a guy or, or anybody that is an addict knows like, you don't just go take one pill and be like, sweet. You know, I would take five and I would take seven. And then it was like, I can't go to this meeting unless I've done this and I can't do certain things. Um, Wait, hold on. Yeah. You said you can't go to these meetings if you don't do certain Sorry. things. Well, I mean, I'm not familiar with like AA or, or like any of yeah. those type things. So what do you mean by that? I, I mean, so at that time I had stopped going to AA meetings, um, just stressful work meetings is what I mean. Oh, by okay. Yes. Got it. Okay. So. Or like, I, I won't be on point, you know what I mean? Like, I won't deliver to my clients or my team what I want unless I'm doing these things. And I'd yeah. time it. I'd be like, shit's going to kick in 20 minutes. <laughs> it's fucking, you know, 12 o'clock. We got our meeting at 1230. God, I'll be on fire by 1230. Um, me and Carrie took a trip uh, to a hot springs. And there's a song called The Habit by a band called The Movement. And as that song was playing on the way up there, um, the whole song is about just having a habit and mm -hmm. don't want to, you know, don't want to be this way. And it just exploded. It opened my heart in that moment. And I just bawled for what an hour the whole way up. 
you know. Yeah. And Carrie's like, what is wrong? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you don't <laughs> even no understand. Idea. <laughs> yeah. And she has no idea when I'm using, which is scary. And I've told her that the moment our conversations change, now that's when you need to be afraid. When I'm not talking about sobriety and I'm not talking about my meetings and I'm not open to, you know, dialogue and open conversations. That's when things, you know, can be a little bit scary. So, um, Carrie had uh, been tracking me on an uh, app on our phones. It's called 360. Life 360. Life 360. Yeah. Um, I was kind of in this I don't give a shit mentality. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, I went over to someone's house that I kind of knew, didn't know her very well. Um, and she had left opiates out underneath the doormat. And so I grabbed those. It was like a this five minute This is just like trip. last October. Oh. Yes, very recent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but what was wild is prior to doing that, I would take opiates and then I would go in my bed uh, and I would put on podcasts of sobriety. So I would be high trying, like thinking about sobriety and I would like listen to meditations of how to be sober. And so like, you know, some users might say that's a waste of a high. I thought I was just trying to get it out of things. You know what I mean? I was just trying to get away from it. And so um, it, it, it just kind of, you know, re reestablished to me like, dude, this is such an issue for you. Like this isn't just like a, a temporary Band-Aid you can put on a scar. It's something that's going to be there for your whole life. So I called a place, um, again, trying to look for a rehab, and I got kind of pitched this really shitty situation. Well, they made it sound glorious. Uh, Come out to New Jersey, Mm. which, I mean, now that I think about it, going to New Jersey doesn't ever sound glorious. But (laughs) um, they're like, oh, we're going to put you on horses. You're going to go to the beach, you know, and it's going to be, you're, you're going to, it's a very spiritual, mental health uh, focused establishment. Um, at the time, I'm telling Carrie how, God, I hate my life. I can't wait to end it. And you guys will be better off when I'm gone. And mm. uh, it'll be hard for a little bit, but, you know. He was really suicidal at that point. Yeah. Oh. It was pretty tough. So, um so we made so we made this plan and the, and I made this plan and Carrie at that time was on her last leg with me and she was out the door and um, all this was going on when I first met you yeah I guess I'm really private about that until today <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you didn't go tell everybody no I'm just no. no, I'm just <laughs> no. So, um, okay, so I made this plan, and I said, I've got to get the fuck away from Idaho. I've got to go as far as away, far away as I can. They pitched this idea of you can be here for one day, or you can be here for f- as long as it takes until you're ready. Then you can leave our rehab. Um, and I remember I told Carrie, I said, I'm going to go for five days. And I booked a flight there and a flight back. And then by the time I had left, I go, gosh, what if I get there and I like it? So I canceled my flight back and had a credit and said, I'm just going to book my flight back when I decide that I'm ready to leave rehab. And we get there. And um, once they've got, uh, once that rehab, maybe, maybe they're not all like this, but once they had you in and they saw your insurance, they did everything possible to keep you at their establishment. Uh, to the point where if I was have a one-on-one with a counselor, there was a microphone in the room to make sure what she was telling me was uh, congruent with their policies of trying to keep people at the rehab. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, or I, if we called Carrie, any, any phone call I had was five minutes. It was monitored. Make sure you know, you know exactly what was said. You can never have your phone in your hands. Um, very um, restricted, like just super restricted. And so uh, I told my, my counselor was this like hopeless romantic lady, and she's she bless her heart. She <laughs> she was great. Um, she would you know on the phone when we call Carrie, she would have a different dialogue with her than what we were having outside of those conversations. And she would say like, you know, you know, I'm gonna have to tell your parents and your your wife that we don't feel you're fit or ready to leave rehab. 
And so, you know, and I'd be like, well, how the fuck can I get out of that? You know, and she'd be like, is there anybody on your list you would like to take off your contact list? And I said, everyone. (laughs) I said, yeah, I don't want you guys calling anyone. Those were the messages I was getting. I couldn't talk to him, and they would just call and say, you should keep him here. He's not ready to come home. And it was like, it was just kind of a terrible experience. Well, what the heck? that part of it. That part of it was. Yeah. yeah. It, right. It was terrible in that sense. Um, so I ended up having some like street knowledge or something. And I, I like get a hold of a guy who's getting ready to leave rehab the next day. He just graduated. I gave him the number of my dad. Um, I had, I knew I had one phone call left before they were going to cut me off. And I call Carrie. And I said, do not answer another phone call from this place. I will call you when I get to an airport, and I will fill you in on what's going on. Don't answer another phone call. This is like a movie. Fucking nuts. (laughs) It was unbelievable. I was getting weird phone calls from, like, weird numbers that I had to answer or not answer. (laughs) And end up in an addict. So I'm like, she is not going to believe a fucking word I'm saying. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. It's so weird. Yeah. And so... um, so I get a hold of this guy, and his name is Mike. And God, he, he was awesome. He called my dad, and he said, Chad's kind of being held against his will um, because it's called AMA, leaving against their policy is called AMA. And because I had AMA, they didn't allow me to book a flight home. They were just going to drop me off at the airport. I wasn't allowed to look at my phone. I wasn't allowed to go to, you know, I, I had, like, spirit or southwest where you know to get home and um i'm in new jersey i'm from idaho right (laughs) i don't know if like that rings bells to people but it was some of us in there there were two two guys that uh got in a fight in the middle of a lunch and i got in between them and i'm like dude who are you saving right now man like (laughs) what are you you're like in a your two bowls are about to go out and you're just getting right in between them you know um, the support that my family showed me was unreal after that. I called my brother. It's one of the first phone calls I made um, was my brother. I called my dad. Um, I remember I called Carrie, and I remember I, I just kind of felt like a salesman to her. I was pitching it to her. I've saved. You know, I found, I, I'm saved. And This is the time. This is the this time. Is when, when I went in there, they gave me a notebook. And I wrote on that notebook, the only thing that has to change is everything. Ooh, that's good. Everything was in capitals. Um, Every group I went to, I wrote something I took from them. Um, I became really open where I was, um, I remember we had a health class. And I was like, I don't know if it's like the food, but like I haven't been able to use the restroom for like, 10 days, you know, and they're like, everyone's like, damn, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, I like, you. I'm comfortable, we're good, and then it got to the point where, like, if I'd stand up, they'd be like, are you going, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, damn it, this is awkward, um, best thing is, that's happened to me, um, I took every class seriously, I mean, I was, I, I, I took a notebook to every class, I wrote, down things of how can I change my mindset? Because I'm o- I've been so over being reliant on something and being dependent on something, and I'm just I've just turned forty. Uh, I'm at this point in my life where I'm like I, I, I've been such a slave, a, a mental slave to. Any, and not just opiates, any kind of mind-altering, get-me-out-of-my-stress type shit. Yeah. Um, came home and... Oh, the first... So this was last October. This was October 23? I was I was in Halloween no. there. I would say it's you November. Missed, yeah. He came home like the right before Thanksgiving, maybe like two weeks before Thanksgiving. So just this last fall? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 The uh, first, I'd say, 60 days were really hard with both of us being sober because before in our relationship, if something had happened, like if he got mad or cared about anything that I was doing or said, he would just 
go drink yeah. or go smoke. <laughs> but now we had like these confrontations that we never had before. It was like, you're bothering me. And it was like, why? <laughs> like, <laughs> Has that always bothered you? Right. It's like, well, <laughs> everything bothers me now because I used to just drink and smoke. Yeah. And now I actually have to like these feelings that I have matter now because they just didn't before. I still remember one day on the way back from the lake, we were doing 75 hard and I was like, I don't think I like you sober. <laughs> like, cause we were both sober right. and it was like, we have to get to know each other on a different, like on a sober level. Like, yeah. I mean, it takes a while. It's, I mean, and we're still every day is, is a challenge, oh, but absolutely. we're, I think we're through like, the worst of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, okay, I, I, we are. We are. <laughs> he's just like, at, I mean, we had so many conversations and so many talks, and he's like, we just have to white knuckle through this. We really do. Yeah. Because at the neither one of us wanted to split, but that word got brought up so many times because we were both these new people trying to figure out ourselves on top of trying to figure out the other person and their yeah. new stuff that was happening. Yeah, yeah, and I and I tell Carrie a lot that I I think that this is just the some of the like crux of being an addict or being you know an alcoholic is that life's already hard. Mm-hmm. Like having a stressful job is hard. Raising kids is hard. I've got an eighteen year old son that like t- pushes every button I know. <laughs> you know, at times. Oh my god. And you know, <laughs> he's try a really good kid. He's a, he's amazing. <laughs> he's yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. My son is great, but you know, he's a son, <laughs> you yeah. know, there's certain things that, and I just, you know, I, I'm all about right now about progress and never perfection. I don't think me and Carrie are ever going to be at a point where arguments don't, don't happen. I don't think any, ever any relationship it's, is it's yeah. unrealistic. Yeah. Yeah. But we're just learning how to control our feelings more when we have those conversations. Yeah. Because being sober now, it's I feel like everything is more on the surface, and it's more dramatic. I feel like than when it was just like, eh, I'll just go outside and yeah, get kind of fucked it up for a little dramatic. bit. You yeah, know what I mean, it's it's so it's, dramatic. Go grab a drink and be like, I'm going away from you for a minute. I'm gonna go yeah. outside. Leave me alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, now it's like I feel this to my core, and it's yeah. nothing. It's like the smallest thing sometimes. Yeah, it's definitely. I mean, because you guys have obviously been doing, like, you know, drinking and doing opiates since you got together. I've right. only, yeah, I've never done that, but just the drinking. Yeah, I can't even take me. freaking opiates after a surgery. It makes me, they make me so sick. Yeah, I do not know how people use I don't them. Get it. I've never understood it. I'm <laughs> like, I don't either. like them. Oh, no, I, and I could take them and climb a mountain. You know what I mean? I've got so much energy on them and focus, and, you know, I feel superhuman on them. And so it's like, wild to me someone said the other day they're like you like opiates and I was like way too much you know what I mean like it's not it's not just this little like oh yeah I mean drinking was to the point like there was there was no off switch yeah there was till the point where like he's passed out somewhere which took a long time in itself or it just stumbling like there was I'd finish other people's drinks yeah there Um, was no stopping Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> You're not going to finish that? <laughs> right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, okay. You don't want the rest of your drink tickets? Yeah. I'll take those. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but yeah. his wasn't just open. It was all of it. It was any way to get out get of out his of mind. Yeah. Or out of my depression. Absolutely. Yeah. So, but, yeah, go ahead. With that being, like, so out of your depression. So, I mean, they say it takes, like, 180 days. So you express the pink cloud. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people... Can you describe that from your perspective, like mm. the pink cloud? Yeah, I don't like it anymore. At first, I loved the pink cloud idea. Like when I first got out of rehab the first time, it was just this like, it was almost like a, a euphoria of its own. You know what I mean? Where it was just this like, geez, look look at how easy this is. You're who you want to be. Um, I would cry at every meeting. I would go to meetings and I would have a share and it would just bring these emotions out and not not like as a dramatic trying to get eyes on me type thing. Like I literally would feel those things. Mm-hmm. And um, to do it now and to share, I don't get that super emotion, but I get the hope 
and I get the strength and I get the understanding of like how much better this situation is now than the first time. You know, I've had this take of like, I'd never want to be that guy that's 30 years sober going to a meeting and talking about it to now I'm going, I can't fucking wait to be a guy who's 30 years sober telling people I've been 30 years sober, you know? And so that, um, different mindset for me, um, I don't have this pink cloud. Everything's pretty real. Mm. You know, it's when I'm sad, I'm sad. If, if, my, if I'm stressed, I'm stressed. If I'm on fire from talking about being sober and relating to another alcoholic or addict, um, I'm on fire, you know? And so it, it, it just feels more real uh, than it ever has. Um, yeah, he did say that this time there was no pink cloud. Because I feel like there's a handful of people in my, in my community and they're really struggling. And one of them is like four and a half, five months. One of them just got out of, uh, I think he was in for 28 days. Yeah. And he's like, I never want to go back. Like it's a disease. And it's like, so yeah. with those types of people, that, that mindset, like what is your advice to them to like, re- like hold on to like not giving up? Yeah, you, you can't. To me, the biggest thing that I've learned is I can never say I've got it. I, I really can't. It, it is something that will, is a disease. Um, mm-hmm. It really is. It's something that um, when you have that disease, you can't ever um, just feel like, hey, everything's great, I can get over, you know. I remember when I was in rehab the first time, I would have this judgment towards people that relapsed. Like, I'd be like, you went through 28 days of this shit with no suit shoelaces <laughs> to like eating the biggest slop of food and going through that to Um, going back out and doing it again just to, like, maybe get back into a rehab, you know? And I'm like, that's kind of fucking dumb, you know? But in my life, everything that I've said is fucking dumb. I've ended up doing, you know? And so that's exactly what happened. Um, For me, the, um, the biggest realization is I cannot ever tell myself, you're good, Mm. or just one. Just, oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah, like there isn't just one. If you have the dis- yeah, if you have the disease and you're a legit hardcore addict, like you cannot ever right. like not even a sip. I feel like yeah, it it, it does get to a point. Yeah, it, it's like mm-hmm. every story that I have has that. Like every every single person that comes in, I knew a guy that ha- was about to get his nine year chip, and he just got his twenty four hour chip three days ago. And nine years, nine years into it, you know, and it. Um, Cause he thought he was good. He thought he could. He lied in the meeting before. Yeah. He, he had lied last week and said, I'm going through a lot guys. Can't wait to get my nine year chip. And then in the meeting this week, he said, I lied to you guys last week. I relapsed. And, Why? Uh, he didn't practice the, the program. He didn't practice sobriety. He didn't reach out to other alcoholics. He didn't call people when he's feeling stress. I love Carrie. I can't tell her everything that I'm going through no. if some of the frustrations <laughs> that I have, no. um, she can't fully understand. But there are people out there that kind of put me in my place, and I love it. Like I, I'll call another guy that's, uh, you know, that's sober, and they'll be like, "Dude, you put that, you put your family through eight years of shit." And you're at a hundred days. Do you think that you've earned all trust? Everything's back, mm-hmm. you know. That, and then I'm like, ah, shit, you know. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, Gary. I think that I, you know, need to work on some things. The program's really been really good for him. Yeah, it has. It's books. It's finding a higher power, which <laughs> is different. Like I grew no. up in a really religious yeah, home, and I, I great. gave up God a long time ago. But I gave up the God that I was raised to believe in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, did I ever think we were going to be people that put our bare feet in dirt 
and grounded ourselves? No. <laughs> Did I think that we would put our bare hands on trees <laughs> and try to get their energy? No. She had me hug a tree one day. But that's you know. what we're doing. That's, I mean, that's an Oregonian thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that, no, right. I know. Like what Eastern medicine shit are you using? No, it's <laughs> so wild, but it's not the that's god awesome. that I grew up to believe in. And it's not, it's my own. And that's what we've talked about. It's, it's right. not, it's a higher power that holds you accountable and is there for you. Like we just had to build our own connections with our own mm -hmm. and whatever that looks like for anybody is totally different than what it's for me. It's been the coolest thing for me. This lady the other day is like, my God's ugly. <laughs> you know, And I'm like, it's like in my head, it's just this old ugly man, you know, and that's been the coolest part for me is being able to like, just change my perspective. Um, it's not this dude in the sky who can squish me and can just pound and, you know, just says, hey, you're doing, you're sinning, so you're not coming to my heaven. Um, right, that's what I was raised, like, yeah. Right. Yeah, it, it kind of makes it fun, in a way. It makes it like, and I was telling the other day in a meeting, I was like, I got this, I got my, I got a homie, you know, and I got someone I wake up to, and I'm like, what do we got today, man? <laughs> you know, and all right, let's do it, high five. Uh, you know, they, they say, thy will be done, and I, Lean on that, you know. Yeah. But I've, I've also learned to, like, lead with my heart and be honest about everything that I possibly can. And then I can actually fucking sleep at night. And it's mm -hmm. wild. I think when you mentioned, like, you have somebody you can talk to and it's, like, it's about support. It's, like, that's going back to my YouTube channel. It's, like, I, that's what keeps me strong because I have an outlet. I have, like, a support system. It's, like, that's my AA. Love mm -hmm. it. Like, Love if that. you think about it. And yeah. I mean, because you didn't go to AA. No, no, I did not. But I didn't have the addiction. Yeah. So your I, body I wasn't like physically dependent on it. No. So you didn't like have withdrawals or. Mm -mm. Was I, it was always just something I did for fun. Habit, crutch. Yeah. Carrie had the worst hangovers ever. So. Ever oh, in my life. They were like, bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you're type one or type, mm -hmm. type one. Type one. Mm -hmm. So how did that like affect your. I oh mean, so like, what's your overall health now, like compared to over a year ago? Um, it's actually really good because a part of that journey when I stopped drinking was I did switch to an insulin pump versus just taking the shots. So, I mean, that just kind of all happened while I was trying to be my best self that fell into place. It's, it's like starting one good thing just kind of dominoed and led to this. Um, back in October... 22, when I quit drinking, uh, my kidney function was really low. Mm -hmm. And it's getting better just because of not drinking. That was amplifying and destroying my body. It really was. On top of, like, having to worry about blood sugar and everything like that, my body was taking in a massive amounts of alcohol. So that was kind of just escalating my health deteriorating. But now... Um, I'm not worried about like health wise things that I was before because that was a really big fear of I'm killing myself. I'm, yeah. I am. And, and uh, you have a little, I mean, you have an eight year old. <laughs> right, exactly. So all of that was just part of like my own journey that I went on. I'm still doing it. And still it was just hard. like a flip of a switch. Kind I, of. I was puking in a porta potty <laughs> in hundred degree weather, but yeah. So that was like your your rock bottom. That's her. It rock was. Yeah, it exactly. wasn't losing a job, losing a spout. Like it was no, like puking it was, in a it, like, smell. No, it like splashes. <laughs> like you don't it splashes. Yeah, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, the visual's amazing. I know. Right? Poor Chad. <laughs> no, I don't. Nah, you're good. But it was. <sighs> Not only I'm that, but so when I quit time. drinking, um, the things that people said to me were so yeah, degree. harsh. It was about like, not drinking. Yes. Did you have any of that? Nobody said anything really rude or mean to me because um, we started this journey with 75 hard. So, of course, I'm like, we're doing 75 hard. And that's one of the main things is you cannot have a sip of alcohol. Mm -hmm. And luckily, the couple that we go camping with, they're like totally like chill, cool. Like it didn't matter if we drank or not. Um, and they were actually very supportive. They're like, wow, that's amazing. You guys can go camping without drinking. Like, I wish I could do that. 
I mean, yeah, they can. Hard. They're they're not <laughs> drinking now, so I mean, they can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, this will be your first summer. I'm of pumped. That. I'm pumped. Okay. I'm pretty excited. To do oh that. my gosh, camping sober! Like everybody's like, how do you camp sober? How do you camp drunk now? <laughs> like I, like yeah, I can I get up. Great. I can do my crap. I I'm I mean I'm productive. I can get home, yeah. empty out the trailer, clean everything. It's way better. <laughs> but this, I did all last summer. It was my first season sober. And it was fine, right? It was fine. And our the, group of friends, nobody's ever peer pressured or anything, but we've been out before at the bar and people buy a round of shots and you don't take it. And people, I've literally, someone said, well, why are you being a stick in the mud? I was like, why does anybody care what I'm doing? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, and there's like comments that I get and they're like, well, what a loser or what a, that's boring. Boring. Or, I mean, boring. boring I remember when you used to be fun. Yeah. what I was told. Uh huh. Yeah. I know. I well, I'm sorry that me being fun was me sloshy drunk, passed out on the couch. I'll right. never say that super, again. Super actually. fun. No, that was thank you. Your thing was, and I understood why you wanted your drinking partner was because you married your drinking partner. You had this life when we got married that it was going to be your best friend on the beach with your beers and yeah. things like that. And so when I was sober and he wasn't, he was like, I kind of miss like our wild drunk nights together. And I understood that, but I wasn't going back because he wanted that. Like, it was a decision I had made. Jonathan quit drinking before me, like, a couple months, but he's like, I miss tequila, Megan, sometimes. And I'm like, (laughs) well, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) I'm sure (laughs) sometimes I miss her, but gosh, that was... Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean by that. I was young. Have you heard that Miley Cyrus song? I used to be young. Yeah. Oh, I would just cry oh, to that. Harry I loses know. It's it. a good song. Harry loses it. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, nobody personally has said too many mean things. I mean, friendships have definitely distanced. Yeah. Because your mindset shifts. Well, and people think that you don't want to do anything with them because yeah. if they're going to do something, they're going to be drinking. And it's like, it oh, doesn't, man. you can drink all you want. I don't yeah. care. I'll drive you home. Yeah. I still want to go do something with you. Yeah. yeah. In the DD, which is kind of weird. Right? Yeah. It yeah. is weird. But people really just want somebody to drink with. Mm-hmm. I found that. Yeah. And that, I think that's where some of my friendships kind of like went away a little bit because they think that we don't want to hang out because we're not drinking. And it's like, exactly. I don't like, I will have a club soda and lime. Like, what is your guys' go to? Like, how do you get over? or through you're still super fresh into it and you've conquered all of the things already Mm -hmm. the first years yeah like how did you how do you get through those like celebrations and events and without like triggers i pre-funk on diet coke (laughs) nice and uh (laughs) you know i think it's just for me it's been just going in with that mindset already Mm -hmm. like i love this new guy like, I really do. There's a new person in me where I'm, like, funnier and I'm, like, able to, like, be more me and just feel more comfortable. Um, my family's always made me very uh, intimidated. You know, I'm very intimidated by their successes and things like that. And so, like, now I just love. I just really get a – I had a situation this weekend where – I went and helped my dad for the first time and I bought like a tool for him for his truck and we shipped it there. And by the time I got there, it was already there. And he's like, what the hell? <laughs> you know, <laughs> he's like, well, this is different. And he's, and I taught him how to do something for the first time in my life, Oh wow! you know? And so, uh, but to the, to the events, uh, I want to say that there, I have had such a support system, even in people who are alcoholics and people who, do drink and you know have admitted that that they have that problem where that is the such the true friendship to me mm-hmm. that they don't hang out with me cuz I'm not getting fucked up or I'm not drinking or whatever yeah. they hang out with me cuz they care about me as a person and anybody that's not on team that <laughs> I I'm going to only care about the people that are in my box yeah you know and that's that's been my take. And how I do think you th- I think that's like how that's a we learn a lot of who actually supports us through our sobriety. Yeah. And like who our real people are. 
because I can go back home and my best friend since we were like 20 or 21, she still tags along right next to me the whole entire time with her white claw. But I mean, nothing changed, nothing changed because we have been friends through it all. Mm -hmm. And I mean, same with some friends here. It's like, they don't, they don't care if I'm drinking or not. I almost expected yeah. some of them to be like, are you sure? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> do you want one? Si and I haven't had any of that. So I yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. That it is nice when they don't force or make fun of you or. Well, yeah. with him, yeah. he kind of, we had a situation where we were going to a friend's house and they didn't know about everything that he'd gone through. And so when he got there, he was really nervous and he kept saying like, I'm just going to tell them like, I'm not drinking tonight or like, no, thank you. And I was like, just be honest. Like, just say, I don't drink yeah. or I'm sober. So I think like the honesty of it has to be there too. You can't just like say it's for the night or like how you said you were doing 75 hard. Like it was the easy way, but like just being honest and saying, I'm a, I don't drink. Yeah, it's yeah. not dry January every day. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like I can't. Well, I think there's the, something, yeah. somebody made a comment one time and it just stuck with me and I will forever like remember what he said. I can't remember exactly what comment it was, but he was like, I choose not to drink, which is more empowering. Mm. Like, I don't, like, nothing told me, like, there's nothing that's made me quit drinking. It's like, that's, it's a choice. Yeah. Which is way Every more day. empowering. Yeah. Yes, it's, mm -hmm. yes. Like, my, that's like, so why aren't you drinking? Because I choose not to. Yeah. Like, why are you drinking? You know, yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Was yeah. yours just, you did 75 hard and were like, this is awesome? I think, I mean, it had to have been like around the three week mark. I was like wow, this is actually nice. Right. And I poured all the alcohol down. Yeah, my first camping trip during 75 Hard, I was I was a royal bee. Yeah. Because, I mean, that was my first sober <laughs> camping trip, and I was yeah. like, uh, how do I do this? Camping's where it all comes out, <laughs> too. Yeah. I know. And so I um, got through that, and I don't know. It just, the more the days went on without alcohol, I was like, this is, this is good. I like it. Right. And then I got through 75 Hard, and then I um, was like, okay, well, then my next big thing is this many days and then this many days. I'm a day, I'm a numbers person. So, I mean, ob you obviously work in numbers, but I'm like, for some reason, numbers stick with me. Mm -hmm. So I think it just drives me. Um, so like, obviously my next big one is a year. Like your goals. Yeah. Yeah. And then like, it's nice on the weekends, I can eat three extra slices of pizza because I'm not drinking 10 beers. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. The carb counts. Yes. Different. Way different. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, I think just, it just feels nice feeling better. But you didn't need a program or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my body cool. wasn't like physically dependent on it. It was just a really big crutch. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you cover trauma up with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So trauma for sure. I just thought it was always something I was doing for fun, but it wasn't fun anymore. Mm-hmm. It really just wasn't. And everything that we were doing before, because we play, we play cornhole, um, that was something right. that was like, how do I do that without drinking? And it's like, oh, I'm actually better now. <laughs> so Shit's going in the hole. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's yeah. funny. You think you need alcohol for all of these things, <laughs> you, and yes. you really don't. Oh like every time I play cornhole, I was like, I have to be drunk to play cornhole because yeah. I'm not going to make it in the <laughs> hole. The backyard, but yeah. I honestly haven't played it so Try it again now. So. <laughs> Maybe you're pro yeah. and you don't even. Like, I mean, I do have these $400 boards, so yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I should use them. <laughs> But so, like, do you have a go-to non-alcoholic drink? No, Diet Coke for me. I I don't yeah. because I have to be sugar-free. True. So, sel like, no, like, just the regular seltzers, no club soda, no. Not really. If I'm out somewhere, they don't have like sugar-free options that don't have caffeine usually, oh. and I don't like to drink caffeine like after like noon or I won't sleep because I'm hypersensitive to it. So if I'm out, no, I will just get water, and I love water anyways. But if mm -hmm. I'm at home, we buy, like, the, yeah, like, the seltzer waters and stuff like, like that. Like LaCroix and Bubblies and stuff? Yeah. Clear water? Clear Americans Thank from you. Walmart. Oh, okay. I so zero, 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 I don't zero, think zero. I've had those yet. Those are pretty yeah, those are what we go through cases a yeah. week of. We go through lots of, like, we buy the Waterloo. But oh, okay. I've seen those at Costco, I think. I think they're they're better tasting. It's healthy, though. Yeah. Mm, yeah, they're zero, zero, zero also. Yeah. yeah. 
that's I have to I can't drink sugar so anywhere we go is like Sprite it's like, no I can't that's do that it's a lot of sugar it's, I know and I used to drink a lot of Jack and Coke and so just Diet Coke was oh I mean it was what 90 tens like I mean it would be Jack that's what his Coke that's exactly what his dad would drink yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but oh my gosh just sorry she me, hated it I, was, and Jack I couldn't broke get kisses when I was after a couple of that Jack and Coke so oh. I remember that no. no, can't do Jack. One of the so just a quick story. One of the final straws was I uh, I grew up playing music, and so um, Guns N' Roses was coming into town, and Slash like to me was just it. Like that was just up, recently. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and so this was what, like two days before I went to New Jersey, and I don't remember the show. And I took my son with me, and my son was so stressed out trying to find out where I'm at as I'm going back and getting Jack and Cokes and just pounding them. And I mean, I've got like videos, but like I grew up playing guitar and Slash has been like my dude, you know? And so to not remember that has just instilled in me, like, dude, like your priorities are so out of whack. Um, Right there with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To miss something like that. I or mean, what? I, I missed a couple concerts that I kicked myself in the butt for. Yeah. I mean, I was physically there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> when he was nervous to go to his first concert sober. Yeah, it's a hip hop show. It and he loved it. Awesome. He's it like, was... I don't know why I never went sober before to these. Yeah. yeah. He I, really enjoyed we've it. We've gone it to a cool. couple and it's funny watching the like the crowd yeah. get wasted and then the <laughs> drama unfold and yeah. you're like, Wow, that used to be me, but not anymore. Yeah. And then this... you have to Uber home and yeah. all this dr- yeah. stuff that came with it, too. And I remember, like, Carter was in front. My son was in front of me, and he was 17 at the time. And I remember just feeling so, like, it was all about Carter having a good time. And he was dancing, and he was, you know, and he was just himself and just, like, and I'm like, dang, like, this is the joy that I should be, I should have been feeling for the last 17 years. Yeah. You know? And so it was eye-opening there the stories of everybody like in concerts and not remembering them yeah. i'm not the only one <laughs> no yeah. did we ask why you quit drinking he was busted no well i mean there that, that was the I, i'm sorry i don't yeah. mean to i don't you mean to busted. correct you i was busted yes I busted guess. so okay. the reason why like the qu- quitting drinking is getting busted so well, the, yeah the, i had a ring notification at 3.30 in the morning that he had left the house. So hard to listen. So I watched <laughs> so, so the guilty. track, and it was just went to someone's house and came right back, and I said, where did you go? And he said, I went to the gas station. I was like, you're caught. Like your gas station's in the middle of a neighborhood? Well, you're <laughs> right. totally busted. So him going to rehab for his addiction, it is required reason, full yeah. sobriety. It wasn't he could get out and drink and smoke weed and just not take pills. Mm-hmm. It's a package deal. If he's doing one, he's doing all three. And mm-hmm. Maybe not at that time, but it will escalate to that. Mm-hmm. It absolutely will. Like, yeah. yeah. It's full sobriety. Yeah, he can't pick and choose because any of them, all he's trying to do is escape from himself. Mm-hmm. So he had to really just buckle down and deal with what he was escaping from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have a therapist, go to a therapist every week. Yes. Mm-hmm. Needed that. It Did used you, to have this stigma behind it, you know. Mm-hmm. Now I, like, promote it. Like, you're going to tell me you don't have some shit you want to go talk about? You yeah. know, like, everybody I, does. I just realized the other day, because, I mean, counseling's hard. I mean, going, I mean, it's awkward. It's hard. Like, nobody yeah. loves it. And definitely don't like paying for it, <laughs> especially if insurance doesn't cover it. But I was like, you know what? I got to think about it. I'm like, counseling actually I think helped me a lot too because I went and I got to talk to somebody and talk through my problems without, you know, my spouse being like, well, you just need to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, you have somebody helping you walk through it. Well, and there's yeah. things that he can't say to me because they're about me. Yeah, <laughs> so, exactly. Like, he Pretty can triggered. go, yeah, <laughs> he can go talk to his counselor and talk all the shit he wants. Yeah. And get it out. Oh, and oh, yeah. I hope it's not. I hope you don't think it's just talking shit. It's fine. Jonathan thinks the same thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of like how to navigate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's. Well, sometimes she's like in my favor too. Oh, she She'll totally like, is. Yeah, she's, she's like, like why'd you do that? And you called like, her a no person? A no like, person. <laughs> She's like, I wouldn't want to be called a no person. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a dick. Sorry. You know, I'm a jerk. Sorry about that. But, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah, counseling helps, I think. 
Yeah, so he goes to his counselor um, once a week and then meetings probably... Saturday, Sunday, Tuesday. Three times Sorry, a week. Three to four times a week. The AA meetings. So are you involved in those? Mm-hmm. So, okay, so part of the... Well, so part of it is they call it acts of service in, in AA. So, like, if you're acts of service, you're the guy that's going to hand out the chip when someone hits their 30 days. Mm-hmm. Or you're going to fill the coffee in at the halfway mark through the meeting. Um, or you're the greeter. You're the guy that shakes everyone's hand, hands. What's up? You know. Um, I haven't been engaged in that part of being in the acts of service. I have this really weird feeling where I have taken all of this advice from people that have gone through sobriety. And I don't feel uh, that I've warranted that for me yet. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's bad thinking or I don't I don't care if I'm honest it's working what's happening is working um at, there's a meeting that I go to um where there is 75 men that go to this meeting and as a guy and being very macho and egotistical <laughs> and you know I I don't cry and I don't share my most intimate moments um those are the best times that I've had in sobriety these are gentlemen Mm. These are guys that have shown an example that uh, talk in a manner. Um, I, I got five guys running through my head right now uh, that have been monumental in my mindset. And so, <clears throat> you know, it's scary. I mean, going there the first time, I'm scared shitless. I'm like shaking and I'm like doing this <laughs> and like everyone can see all my moves to like now I just go in and I'm like, you're going to leave here feeling something different, you know. So he was asked to, he spoke for like 30 minutes at a rehab center here locally, mm-hmm. just sharing his story, trying to encourage. Yeah, pass it along, the message, and even if it reaches one person, that's the goal. Yeah. So he's done that, but other than that, he's just just in the program for now. Mm-hmm. And then I'm in Alnon. So there's a, so, okay. So when we started with uh, me being sober, Carrie, um, and I think most spouses, I don't know how to say that. I'm not, I don't want to say it that way. The way that I want to say it is that it's not a perfect pattern of how to navigate those troubles, right? Those mm-hmm. tribulations, those times that you hit that are very tough. And I would come to Carrie and I would say, you know, maybe, I, maybe, you know, you could go to therapy. I mean, it's hard to sell it. tell all your wife that, like, God, you need therapy, you know. And that's not how it came across. <laughs> but it, it would say, you know, there's, there's a program out there for people that have alcoholics or, or addicts in their life called Al-Anon that helps them understand the disease a little bit better and their role in that disease. Oh, mm-hmm. that's good. And, yeah, so it's just like AA meetings, pretty much. Um, I go once a week, and there's books and steps <clears throat> and everything, but it's just mostly, um, and the specific one that I go to is like parents that have alcoholic children and or spouses. So or is that group for like in, like anybody that has addicts in their family, not just for spouses or kids? Like it's yeah. for like... Okay. For anybody that has been affected by someone else that has the disease. It's just a support group. And it helps you understand. It does. That. It it really is about focusing on yourself mm-hmm. and what you can change and what you can do in the situation that removes yourself from their disease. It's like separating. Okay. Um, I really like it. And it's not this bash your qualifier is what they're called I'm your, <laughs> qualifier I'm your, I'm your little qualifier is what I've been <laughs> yes. to. I'm just uh, it's not like that it's it's like about you it's about yourself and finding people that are in your situation too that benefit from being able to call somebody like I need someone to talk to at a really rough night and yeah. it's it's just a good support group for people that are going through it I didn't I guess I didn't realize I had was... no idea either I was so proud of Carrie to take the suggestion. Mm-hmm. It's so easy to say, now I got my shit together, you know. And the first time she went, like, I just remember being like, she's in. Like, 
Like she is in on whatever it's going to take for us to figure this shit out, you know, and it was very attractive, you know, and it was, and then I, the next Monday I was like, are you going to go, you know, again? And she's like, oh yeah. You know, and I'm like, what? Like that, it was really inspiring to me. Like I found that, it beneficial. I do. Yeah. That's good. Mm-hmm. I'll keep that one in mind because there's a lot of people <laughs> that could use that advice. Yeah. There's a, sorry, quick, quick, there's a lady I know that goes to AA meetings and goes to Al-Anon because she has family members that are still alcoholic. So she's an alcoholic. And then she's recovering. She, recovering alcoholic, yes. And uh, like, I think she's got 12 years. But then she has members of her family that she's trying to figure out how she fits in that role. And so that was, that's a wild thing to me to like go to both mm, sides yeah. because she's involved with all of it. She's been it. She is it. And she deals with it, you know. And those are the best, like the ones that have like really lived through it yeah. and can maybe help their other family members. Um, all right. Here's another question. Has not drinking strengthened your marriage? Are there awesome things about each other that you didn't notice when you were drinking that you now notice and appreciate? Um, <laughs> the first couple of months of sobriety did not strengthen us whatsoever. <laughs> it tested every piece of it. But there are things that I have really found that he's um, doing. Like, he really has to stay busy. And so this whole list of projects or things around the house that have needed to be done for three years we bought our house, they're all done. He wow. he can't sit still because he wants, you know, the what is it, idle hands or the devil's hands or something. Oh, heck yeah. Um, so he's really productive. And that's a really cool thing to have someone pitch in more and be attentive more and not just in the garage by themselves wanting to detach and be alone. Um, so that's been really nice to have him like step up and do more things around the house. That's been really nice. I have noticed I'm like OCD and I didn't know that. So like I'm anal about things. So if it's not just perfect, I'm like, well, that kind of shit work. It's <laughs> funny that you mentioned right. that because I mentioned that to my MP like the other day and I was joking about OCD. He's like, wait, are you, have you been diagnosed with this? And I said, no, 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 no. I just say that I'm OCD because I like. You care and, now? I know like, I, I, I feel <laughs> yeah. OCD and about he's, it. Yeah. And um, anyways, right. apparently there's this thing called OCPD. And he's like, maybe oh. you should look into that. Oh, and okay. because he, he just does the med management or whatever. But like, so I got a counselor and I have a friend that is actually specialized in OCD. And um, I was like, OCPD sounds a lot like me. So I think it's like obsessive compulsive personality disorder mm -hmm. yes. and I yes thank you because I was like oh my gosh like things are so much like I'm more anal about things now he is too <laughs> but shit looks good when we're done like you know what I mean like yeah. I'm like wanted but to but things look, like I think when he was Sorry. like yeah. not sober it was like oh that painting's crooked who cares right <laughs> like, it doesn't matter yeah like no big deal and now he's like oh my god it's a centimeter higher over here it doesn't matter. But it does now. Yeah. It really does to him. He's very particular now. Yeah. OCPD. OC yeah, I mean, I'm not disorder. obviously a doctor or anything, oh, but I like just saying. researching yeah, absolutely. it. Google and I was like, so oh, fun, yeah. yes, Dr. Google. <laughs> yeah, Dr. <laughs> <laughs> so, Internet has told um, me, yes. <laughs> but yeah, I guess it's like, it's a legit thing. Yeah. I was like, oh, I mean, I've not been diagnosed with it yet because nope, I haven't talked to anybody. But yes. would you say there's things about me since we've been sober that <sighs> I don't there's been things he doesn't like? I can that, tell you that. I don't know. I want to tread lightly because <laughs> there there is certain things where like you, you kind of touched on it earlier where like I could kind of just be like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> you know, and just go just hit a pen. And um, that was kind of my second go to. Um, I, I would say, I mean, Gary, I fell in love with you because of the mom that you are, the heart that you have, the way you treat people, and you've always stayed super consistent with that. And so um, I wouldn't say that it's new what I know that has always brought me close to you, mm -hmm. but I would say that it's um, more vibrant. Like it's just something that I feel more. I, I can see it more. When I see um, 
you be a certain way with Hank or with Carter and that I can actually feel it, mm. you know, rather than mask yeah. it. And so I don't want to say it's like a new feeling, but I'm just doubling down on what I felt for you. It's like appreciated mm. more. Okay. Yeah. So you see her in a whole different light now that you're not like blinded. <laughs> yeah. Well, he was really detached. Yeah. I would say is a good word. He was really just struggling with his own depression and using, and it was a cycle. Yeah. And I don't mind calling out the shit that annoys me now, you no. know, and <laughs> communication <laughs> but, is key, right? Yeah. But, it, but it, you but like, okay, but within the first like 20 days, it would be like, well, that shit annoys me. And that's why I use, you know, and it would be very negative. And I've learned to like, just have a delivery of like, if you say that shit probably won't go well. <laughs> Think about what you're We're and we that. call it pause, you know, and mm -hmm. A, we say pause, think about it, and then deliver. And um, since I've been able to do that more, I can get my point across in not such a crude way. And so it's it's been more impactful. I don't know. Yeah, the Forget first couple of months were hard, but it's definitely like when you get through that and you find different ways that work for the communication and everything kind of settles down, I would say. We're at the point where it's, we're still working on it. It's we're a still work in work, progress. It's going to be everyday work, mm -hmm. but it's not where it was when he first got home. That was... I can imagine that would be hard. Mm -hmm. That was hard. Next question. <laughs> do, you, um, do you notice a difference in your energy levels? Do you have better clarity and how you feel overall since quitting alcohol? Yeah. Like, is your, does your, is your work, um, do you produce better? Um, I would say that I get more done in all aspects of parenting, um, working, taking care of the house. I would just say all of it. Cause when you're hungover, nothing got done. Yeah. I didn't want to do anything. I literally physically couldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, productivity definitely soared because I'm able to function my energy levels, I think part of my recovery was finding the gym too. It was finding, um, and him too. We both have found a, a good exercise routine that we're doing. So that, and that was, itself, that was another question. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm glad that you're answering it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it all goes together, keeping your mind busy, keeping yourself healthy and making, it's a domino. Like yeah. I said earlier, like one healthy choice leads to another Versus if I skip the gym, I'm more likely to be like, let's go to lunch or, you know, it's just, so my energy levels, yes. Um, I wasn't, I drank, I quit drinking for a long time, but I was still smoking weed a lot, like every day, all day, every day. I was never a big, I, I was never a big fan. But people are like, yeah. you should smoke weed. And I'm like, mm, well, mm, I'm good. <laughs> I did until this year. So 2024 was when I stopped because I didn't feel right. Yeah, like sure. having it around or that was in our home for him to find or it, it just wasn't fair. And I'm like half stupid. So it that's not fun to be completely sober and trying to better yourself. And then your spouse is like. <laughs> so I really, the clarity really came when I dove into being completely sober off of everything. And it's really, I mean, the change is drastic. It's like a fog is just gone. Well, yeah. And you lost a lot of weight, babe. You lost during, like, from the time you got sober to, it was like 40-something pounds. 20. 25. Since, no. since 22? Yeah, so not it's up and down too. Maybe at well, one point her, it, it, she has an uphill battle with it with but diabetes. Yeah. And mm -hmm. yeah, but I mean, I thought you made a lot of progress. Yeah, but I thought it was like four and, or three pounds. And it's probably easier to maintain and not gain weight now that you're not drinking. I mean, I know that your health yeah. issues cause. I mean, we, I have a family friend that has type one diabetes, and she has like double zero to size twenty in her closet because. It's a fluctuation, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, yeah, that did play a part in it, but it was also just mostly because I could work out. I wasn't stuck in bed. I could get up and do something. 
They were just the worst. Yeah, try getting up at 4.30 in the morning and training people at 5. <laughs> did you make it? Oh, I did. There was mornings where I was like, how am I going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> and I actually participated with my class. Oh, no. Oh, brutal. Dang. Now yeah, you wake up and you're like, let's do it. Yeah. Especially it's nice waking up after Super Bowl mm-hmm. at 5 o'clock in the morning and working out. And I'm yeah. like, wow. Yeah. He gets to the gym at 4 o'clock every morning. At, like routine? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Nice. I mean, that's helped you tremendously. Yeah, I think the routine's so big. Yes. I have a, I think he's in his mid to late 50s guy that is very involved in my channel. And he's very routine. Wakes up at four o'clock in the morning, exercise, breakfast, and walk. I love that guy. Like, mm-hmm. very, very, yes. very, very routine. And he's been sober for two years now. Yeah, that's. That's important. Yeah. He yeah. had, um, we had a really big hurdle last weekend because he was having eye surgery. He had a, like, it's not LASIK, it's more invasive. It's called the PRK procedure. It's a corrective procedure. Yeah. Um, But they usually prescribe pain pills (gasps) to recover. And we didn't fill the prescription. We were just gonna, he was gonna suffer through and that was the plan. Yeah. And he did. And it was, it was kind of incredible to watch because People, I mean, it's on the take-home list. Take your pill this time, this time, this time. And he you didn't. Can, you can, when you have the procedure, you can, this is going to sound graphic, but you can smell your skin burning because the laser is going into your eye to correct your vision. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> let's just say it was a painful recovery. I but can... he did it. He never asked for that. But he knew I had it. He knew I had the prescription. He knew he could get that relief. And I mean, the, he said it was the worst pain he's ever had in his entire yeah, life. Yeah, absolutely. Ever. I was a madman though. Like I, we have a kind of this L shaped, almost half U shaped pattern in our house. And for three hours I was wearing sunglasses, just wa- listening to Huberman walking <laughs> from this room to this room, to this room, to this room and listening how to manage pain from Huberman. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, I could try that right now, you know? And he it did was, it though. I was really proud. He got it. Because yeah. I mean, there's always going to be a reason to drink, or a reason to take a pill. There, there's always going to be something. Mm-hmm. But he, he made the choice. He wasn't going to do it, and he didn't. Can you take ibuprofen or Tylenol? Yeah, we okay. did take. Yeah, it's just did anything it that wasn't that is, doesn't have hit your opiate receptors, and that's usually what Makes well, always got yeah. me in a tough that's spot. I've so. never understood the opiate addiction, and I don't it's, think I ever will. Yeah, <laughs> the it's pandemic, okay. it's, it's huge, or epidemic, whatever that is. Pan, yeah, epidemic. Yeah. 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 We just went through it. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, me either. I take them, and I just get sick. Oh, yeah. And sleep. Especially Vicodin. I'm like, please mm. prescribe me Percocet if you're going to do anything. Yeah. Like, Because yeah. I won't puke on Percocet like yeah. any Vicodin. <laughs> Vicodin is up within 20 minutes. Yeah, they yes. have this stuff. Uh, I mean, I don't want to glorify it, but it's called Opana. And it's like one of the heaviest opiates that's out there. $80 for a pill that big. That's good to know. And I would take <laughs> three in a day. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, the money. Do you watch like the um, like the cop shows and the uh, um, re- what are they, the recovery type shows? The, um, like oh, like intervention? Yeah. Or, yeah. And like, then you're like, oh my gosh, thank goodness I am not that person anymore. Yeah, I was talking about at work today about the lady, I don't, I don't mean to make fun of it, but who was like addicted to air can dusters. I've seen and that so one. she would like be a bit sent. She'd be like, so the other day, <laughs> you know, and you're like, damn, like she was pretty dependent on. Air, oh, it's you know. crazy. But I mean, it's, I such, it's that OCD. Show it's it's the home. guys that have to turn a light up, switch off and on. There's mm-hmm. some mental thing that's going on. Mm-hmm. Here's a good one for you guys. What are you thankful for and have gratitude for in life? You go ahead, babe. No, you go ahead. Well, he actually makes a list every day, a different one. That's what part of his wake up routine is to write down Great. five things. He's no, whatever, is there? whatever's on the mind. Sometimes oh, okay. it's eight, sometimes it's zero. <laughs> so he's he's par with the gratitude. Yeah, I think my biggest thing lately is that not just creating a gratitude list, but like really feeling the gratitude. Hmm. Um, it's easy for me to like know as a parent, I'm gra- grateful for my kids. I'm grateful for my health. Um, uh, I've been listening to a little bit of Tony Robbins and certain things where 
um, I really want to like feel it, you know, and I really want to like not just say it. Um, but you know, I, I'm grateful for, I mean, almost everything right now. I'm really grateful for my work. I'm grateful for my relationship with my brothers that I've always kind of neglected. I'm thankful for relationships uh, with uh, family. I think Carrie ends up on that list at least three times a week due to conversations that we have. Oh, I check it every morning to see if I've made the list. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm like, She's am like, I oh, on the list She's like, what's your shopping list? Too expensive. So we just did a podcast it. together, my husband and I, about like this possess- not being possessive and like jealous. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's my shit. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> I know. I'm like, oh, did I make the list today? No. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. um, What are you grateful for? What am I grateful for? I'm grateful that we're going through this together. Mm -hmm. That's been huge. Um, I'm I'm really grateful for the programs that we're both in and then the people that come with those programs. Um, I'm grateful for the new life that we have the chance to have. The old one wasn't working. Um, what we were doing wasn't working. So I'm grateful for what is to come. Yeah. Do you feel like um, you were just stuck in a rut and like you weren't going to go anywhere else in life besides just like stay there? But now like there's your mindset's shifted. So now you're like, oh, we can do this. Like we have these goals and plans and like they all seem like doable now. Yeah. Stuck is a really good word. It really is. That's a word we've said a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Stuck. Mm-hmm. And now you're getting unstuck. Yeah. But we had to do it separately. It wasn't like it's our sobriety. Mine is my own. His is his own. Yep. And we support each other through our own. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Because a lot of spouses out there um, are like, how do you do it? How, like, how do you do it when the other spouse is not doing it? And that's like the biggest question I get asked. And I'm like, I don't know. I didn't do it without my spouse because my spouse did it before me. And I did it for a year, a little over a year. And it didn't bother me that he wasn't because I was at the point where I was doing it for myself anyways. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it would have been nice. It's nicer now together, but it was, it's my own. Mm -hmm. It isn't his. I think if Carrie knew about the opiates, it would have been a completely different ball game. But when it came to like my drinking and just smoking weed, mm-hmm. she didn't mind that. Right. Wait, wait. So you didn't know about the opiates as much, like? No. Um, no. Yeah. Not until he came to me and said, "I'm. This is what I've been doing. This is. I need help." Which, which, which was always wild to me because when I would be on opiates, I could look in the mirror and instantly see the different Chad. Like I could instantly look in my eyes and go, you got like either this smirk or this, just this different aura on my face. And I remember like coming to carry him like, do you even know me? Like, we you were know? just high all the time. We were just, I thought yeah. we were just smoking weed. <laughs> Yeah, you I did. Was wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was really wrong. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. No, so I didn't know until yeah. I caught him. I will, I will say one thing that I want to add that I always like to add to my gratitude list is the ability to sleep. I don't mm. know how to, like, oh. put that into a full understanding of, like, mm. I would be up every 20, 20 minutes. minutes, 40 minutes. I would go outside. I'd, like, hit a vape. I would go back, lay back down. I would shake my legs, restless leg syndrome. I would put on meditations for two hours and listen to them all the way through and still not be able to get to sleep. And the taxing that that had on my mental health was so big where like... Sleep is huge for mental health. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so to like go to bed and like I would put on these things called yoga nidra um, and it's basically like yoga for your mind and what it does is like it really talks you through how to get to sleep and I haven't finished one yet and they're little like 20 30 minute sessions and you start to think about your right thumb and your miss and then you think about your left thumb and then next thing you know you're thinking about and I've made it as far as like my chest and 
before I would listen to him and I could go through up and down <laughs> my body and I'm like, why are you still awake? You know? And so I, I really appreciate being able to like go to bed, wake up, hit my routine, start, you know, start my vehicle, go, you know, get, have my coffee brewing, write down my gratitude list. And, and it just becomes this like, you know, it's all great when a plan works Drunk out, sleep know? is the worst. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. Sleep. <clears throat> it is the worst. Yep. It's terrible. Yeah, who remembers that? So yeah. how long did it take you to sleep? To get to be able to sleep? Mm-hmm. Um, in rehab, scariest place I've ever been in my life, um, I couldn't sleep. But I was, like, pretty motivated. So, like, I'd wake up at 6, and it wasn't, like, this big grog. You're like, uh, I'd wake up and just kind of go. Um, I would say that by the time, and, and let, let me also say in rehab, there's a lot of people that go in that are like, hey, can I get an extra muscle relaxer? Oh. Hey, I'm, I'm detoxing. Can I get this to help me get through my withdrawals? And I didn't take as much as a Mucinex. I think I took one Mucinex in the time that I'm there. And I really had a take of like, dude, if you're, you're not going to be dependent on anything. Yeah. You know, and so um, that, you know, that really helped me. Um, I'd say that by the time I got home, we were rocky. And so when we were mm-hmm. rocky, um, we would have a lot of late nights arguing or I would be in this room. She's in the other room. And, you know, you're just kind of rub, you know, just shaking your head. of like, what the hell is this ever going to get better? You know, and finally, when me and you got on the same page mm-hmm. and my like stress with that calmed down, I could lay down, say I've been as honest as I can be as a human person to my wife and my life and I don't have a guilty conscience go to bed you know I think that's what kept him up a lot was all the guilt Mm -hmm. it did I mean yeah you were hiding something pretty big Mm -hmm. and the guilt against uh, my going against my best self like I know that I fire on all cylinders sober you know and that not being my potential destroyed me um, every day and then it would be like this justification I don't know I'm not like a justification but it would just be kind of this feeling of like you're never gonna get out of this rut man you're, you're never gonna change you're gonna be this guy and you're gonna be this poor pitiful me son of a bitch the rest of your life if you don't figure something out and do it and change and you know, thank God and you did thank God yeah. wow well. mm-hmm there's, so, there's like so many more questions that I like want to <laughs> ask, but, um, so Chad, for you, um, what is a key takeaway that like the community can take from you? Like you've been through it all, like you've been addicted to anything that can alter your mind. Mm-hmm. Um, for those that are like struggling so hard right now, like how, where, what was, what would be like a first step for them and like just some encouragement or like piece of my, I mean, just any advice? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's so many different things. I, I feel like it takes so many things for it to work. I don't want to overwhelm someone by saying that, but what I do want to say is that um, the only thing that has to change is everything. Like, I and, love that. And that, that take that I had on it um, allowed me to be more successful than I could have been. Um, I don't have, I wasn't raised religious. I didn't pray, but I wake up in the morning and I ask my higher power, my best buddy, right? My guy that's going to guide me through or my, or my manifestation. Maybe that higher power is not a God, but maybe it's a manifestation of getting my mind turning in the right direction Mm -hmm. rather than waking up and saying, how's today going to suck? Poor pitiful me. I wake up and go, let's do this, man. What can you do? to get the mind rolling and the snowball rolling in the right direction. And whether that's higher power, whether that's God, whatever it is, it's working. And uh, getting a a group of gentlemen around you who can be a support system, who have gone through it, where you can leverage their ideas, Mm -hmm. um, has been monumental as well. And uh, being 100% open and honest about it. it. It has allowed me to be more of who I am, always keeping in the back of my mind that I could fuck up at any moment. Mm-hmm. 
any moment. My parents are going to die someday. My son could get break his leg. There can be things that I can will happen in my life that will justify me being able to use or me being able to drink. And being prepared to hit those troubles, um, it's going to take every tool I've learned since to get past those hurdles. And then being proud. Yes. Being, being proud to, when you do it, getting that gratitude, um, being able to finally pat yourself on the back and not feel weird about it or feel like you're going against any grain that you've ever had because you haven't been able to do those things. Um, really set an energy inside of you in motion that makes it easier for the next time. I really look forward to one day being an observer. Um, to not being so involved when with every AA meeting and um, feeling like I need to speak and I need to say something every single time and where I can sit back and say, I have been X amount of years sober and I want to help someone who's going through it. Mm. That motivates the hell out of me to be there and be the example that I've seen other guys be for me. So that's amazing, yeah. Years being able to help people. Yeah. I think that's empowering. And Carrie, what do you, like, for people, I feel like you're a lot like me. We just decided one day, like, we were just, we were done. Yeah, I mean, didn't have a place. Yeah. Um, what was the question, though? I mean, <laughs> <it> was, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> that was, funny? like, five minutes ago. <laughs> like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> like, people utilizing their mindset to just be like, I don't, this isn't part of me anymore. This is no fun. I, there's no place for it. Like, a lot of people will say there is no place for this in my life. And mm -hmm. you literally just said that. There isn't. Yeah. So like, what is some advice that you can give, you know, somebody else struggling or like teeter tottering, like, uh, well, I'm, I'm only sober for four days. You know, this is just like, I don't know if I want to quit or, you know, like some, some people, here's the thing. Some people say, I don't know if this is just temporary or if I want to make it permanent. Right. Yeah. I've heard that. Like, mm -hmm. it's all or nothing. Um, I would say find the reason you do drink. There's a reason that you you drink. Mm -hmm. And it's not for fun anymore at this age. That's not <sighs> what's happening. Something is in your mind, something in your past, something you're worried about in the future. Find out why you drink and deal with it. Get your head in the space where you're okay with anything life throws at you. You're, you, it's you have to be mentally strong for anything. Otherwise you're going to drink the next time something happens, mm -hmm. but there's everybody has a reason why they drink and you just have to find it and crush it. Crush it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Like right yeah. <laughs> and then last one from both of you. So you guys didn't do this together in the beginning. No. So what would be like a main piece of advice for those that keep asking, like, how do you do this without your partner? Um, you well, you didn't have to do it without. Yeah, you have a different take than I do. Without my partner, I, I didn't do it for him. It didn't matter to me what he was doing. If we went somewhere and he was drinking, I didn't care. Yeah, it was dope for me because I had a, you had DD a DD every time. Yeah, for a full year. <laughs> But it didn't matter to me what he was doing because I knew what I wasn't doing. And it wasn't because anybody else wanted me to not drink. or It was because I didn't want to. Do I think it would have been easier in the beginning? No. I honestly don't. Because I needed to find myself sober. And I needed to find my new goals and my new self. And that got disrupted actually when we both got sober because then it was like, now we have to find each other again. <laughs> yeah. I hope I like you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I know, but yeah. it wasn't hard to do it by myself because I wasn't doing it for anybody else. Key takeaway. You weren't doing it for anybody else. You no. were doing it for yourself. Yeah. And that is definitely so crucial mm -hmm. because if you do it for somebody else, you're just going to fail. Exactly. I was at the point where I didn't want to anymore. I didn't want to drink and I didn't matter what anybody else did. I will still hang out with anybody that's drinking. It doesn't bother me. It didn't bother me when he did. 
did I ignore him more? Yes. But yeah, <laughs> that was just because <laughs> drunk people kind of suck when you're sober. Right? Oh. They do. Yeah. I mean, we like, well, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, and he had his times where he'd go out with his friends, and that was fine. I didn't need to be a part of that. I had my own things I was doing. I had new things I wanted to try. And have, have you guys had to eliminate anybody from your life because you have chose to be so sober? Yes. No. You have? Yeah, he, is, he has, yes. Because the my, people my that friend. he did <clears throat> harder things with, like the, the pills, they were contacts. They were a way mm. to get them. They were, yes, he has. Your best friends, yeah. Yeah, I have a, I have a friend that uh, growing up was, yeah, it was really, really important to me. Really, really important to me. I mean, we'd walk halfway to each other's house, and then we would hang out every uh, every weekend. And um, he's a tattoo artist, one of the most unique people uh, that I've ever met. And not so much that he would, like, force me and be like, come on, man, that's not cool, but more of the, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Just knowing that I wasn't really like set up for success the best way I could be. Mm -hmm. I'm putting myself in a position where I could relapse at any time. Yeah. You know. And so I've I've had to make that decision. I love that guy from afar. Carrie does not his, not her favorite person in not the world. Not even from afar. <laughs> Is it, not even from no. afar. <laughs> um, but, but you know, there's a lot of things that uh, we experienced you know, a lot of the music that I'm into, like old school punk, no effects, you know. But he's still like really um, deeply using, so there's no chance. There's there's we, no way they could. Yes, I'm not saying a word. Yes. I know. I, I and, just, I, and I, like I said, this, that's my relationship with him, and I choose that. I'm not doing that for Carrie. Mm -hmm. I've never done that uh, because Carrie says that. That's because it puts my sobriety at risk, and mm -hmm. that's why I made that decision. Yeah. You have to eliminate the toxic people out of your life to be successful Yeah, the close, in anything. Yeah, the close group of friends that we have, though, oh, so didn't great. even bat an eye. They're I mean, so They great. still drink. We we camp, too. We're campers. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, everybody still drinks. And mm -hmm. some, actually, like, a lot of them are stopping, too. It's, it's Isn't weird. Isn't that funny? You start a trend. You yeah. almost start a trend in your own little group of people. And it's not. It's for their own reasons, too. Mm -hmm. I think we're just at the age where a lot of us are just realizing this kind of sucks now. Yeah. We're too old for this. Yeah. One of my best friends in the world, um, I, ju I tell him all the time, I'm like, how do you know this shit, man? Like, you haven't been through rehab and sobriety. And he's just got this natural, like, understanding of certain things. And I called him on the way to rehab. I He, he was, you know... Uh, We've got a kind of me, him, and another guy are in a group chat. And the other guy said, What's your plan when you get home, Chad? He drinks, you know, and he goes, What's your plan when you get home? What are we going to do to make sure that this works, you know? Oh. Like, and, and it, and it's not this judgmental thing. It's, Hey, man, I know how much you want this. I'm on your side, you know? And not everybody I, gets that. Not everybody. I, no, I feel very sure. fortunate. Uh, those, those two guys kick ass. They, they're great guys. And they're my, they're my very best friends. You know, there's writer dies. Yeah. I think it just proves that they were from the beginning and mm -hmm. they weren't party friends. Because right. I feel like we've all had the party friends and they're gone. Oh, even, you know, Adam, I, another another friend that has been my soulmate from uh, high school. Like we played tennis together, played guitar together, uh, have that same humor, have had the same just kind of. Uh, situations in life both our brothers became really successful lawyers we've always kind of laughed about that um, he has been great you know and he owns a bar you know and it's never been like don't come to my bar or you know like i it's the people that are like rooting for you at all times mm -hmm. no matter what you're going through those are the people that give a shit about you yeah you know that's who i want in my corner yeah and you don't want those people that think like oh they're better than us now yeah. I'm not. Oh, no, I'm not. And I don't I, care I, anybody yeah. does. I, I really that. don't care. Like, if something makes you happy, be happy. Yep. But it, this just didn't make me happy anymore. Yeah. So, Chad, you did it for yourself, getting sober, for the most part. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of things, uh, there, there's a lot of things that kind of get shamed to people where they say, how come you couldn't do it because you had a kid? 
Or, you know, why, why didn't you do it for your kids? Or why didn't you do it for your wife? Or am I not good enough, you know? Because you have to do it for yourself. You have to do it for yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. And you have to also, like, <laughs> you kind of have to hit certain moments. Like, I had to hit some depression, <laughs> you know? And I had to hit some per- certain things where, like, I went to my therapist. In my first therapy session, she goes, do you want me to help you with your addictions? And I said, absolutely not. I said, I am not here for you to fix me being an addict. I'm an addict. And I'm an alcoholic. I, whatever I do, I do balls to the wall and I run it to the ground. I am here to figure out why am I doing those things? Like mm-hmm. What things Ooh, are yeah. stemming from the bottom that are causing me? Is it the anxieties of my family? Is it the, I had a great childhood I, in my mind. You know, what, what is causing me to feel like I'm running from reality? And let's attack those things in my therapy. And then I'm going to use AA and a program and other things to attack how do I handle my sobriety and stay sober. And that coupled together has been such a powerful thing. Like I have tools to be able to handle my mental health crap and I have uh, tools to be able to handle my sobriety. And they, they kind of coupled together. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. They do. 